Good morning. Welcome back to the lookout. Today is the 5th of September. We're going to talk about the Caldor fire, the Dixie fire, and a little bit about uh, fuels thinning, fuels management. Um, probably hearing stories about how all the fuels reduction work that's been done around Tahoe Basin really helped us save Myers. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about what fuel reduction is, what it looks like when we talk about it at a large scale, and uh, just some thoughts as we go along on how it works and what it's good for. So um, I don't have a lot to report on the Caldor fire. It's still um, been a little bit of spread in the more remote areas that we've been talking about, uh, you know, south of Strawberry. All in all, a lot of good firefighting has been done, and um, there'll be some, I'll post a few maps on the Lookout website of um, where the action is, but uh, right now we're going to talk about fuels. So fuel thinning is when we do forestry work to reduce the amount of vegetation in the forest. So cutting trees, basically cutting brush. Uh, this map here, all the kind of light white shows areas where there's been fuel reduction done on Forest Service land. One thing interesting about the Tahoe Basin is that there's a lot of land that's um, considered Forest Service land. Uh, the developers got ahead of the environmentalists in the Tahoe Basin in the 60s and 70s and a lot of land got subdivided and then uh, people were concerned about the impacts on the lake and on you know the forestry and so there was a um, state bill that funded a bunch of acquisitions of lots that hadn't been built yet with the idea that hey if we can prevent building out a lot of these lots um, it'll be better for the lake, it'll be better for the watershed, uh, it'll be better, better for forestry. So um, California Tahoe Conservancy is part of um, kind of how that all unfolded. Uh, so all these white lots are Forest Service um, lots purchased through the Conservancy and all of those have had thinning of the fuels done on them. Also there's been a lot of thinning so um, on other kind of strategically located Forest Service parcels adjacent to the urban interface. So all this white is places that we've come in and we've thinned the forest over the last you know, 10 or 20 years. So what's that look like on the ground? Um, I'm going to jump over here. Sorry. This is along Highway 88. Um, it's right where the Mormon Immigrant Trail uh, peels off of 88. And it's an area where we held the fire. Right? So the red line here through the middle of the screen is the fire perimeter. All the yellowish stuff on the right is places that the fire burned. On the left, you see all this white polygons. These are all places that the fuels were thinned in the past uh, 10 or 15 years on the El Dorado National Forest. All this stuff makes a huge difference for, uh, you know, when we're out here trying to hold a fire. Uh, you can see that these things, you know, these are places we stop the fire. And the best places to do thinning are these places that we are going to, we know we're going to go try to stop a fire. So strategic ridge lines, major highway systems. You know, I think rightly so, there's a lot of people who are concerned about just thinning randomly in the middle of the forest and calling it, um, saying we're doing it for fire suppression. Um, we see when we have fires that just are blown across the landscape, when they get to thin stands, it's not necessarily saving the trees that are there. Um, and so focusing on strategic places, we can't thin the whole forest. You know, if you look at, you know, the El Dorado National Forest, it's a million acres or something like that. We're not going to thin it all. It's, it's too expensive. We don't have the access. We don't have the, uh, there's not a market for the wood chips. A lot of the times thinning, it doesn't pay for itself. You don't make enough money selling the logs that you thin to pay for the work. So we're, you know, no, no logger is going to go out and do this um, at a loss and there doesn't seem to be a public appetite to spend tens of millions of dollars to do this work. So as a starting point, we really, um, what we, we've been doing strategic thinning for years, right? There's people on each national forest that they're fuels planners and they're fire experts as well as knowing a lot about how to do this work. So that's why you see a lot of this work concentrated along strategic corridors like Highway 88 or the Mormon Immigrant Trail. 
So I um, just want to share that the stuff has been, this has really helped firefighters. Among other things, what this accomplishes is this gives us a safe place as firefighters to come park our trucks, um, to come get tooled up. Uh, it makes it less likely we're going to get it overtaken and uh, you know eaten by a monster crown fire as we come out to be firefighters and do this work. I'm going to jump up now to the Dixie Fire and we're going to look at some thinning along uh, Highway 821. Uh, A21 runs north out of Westwood. So um, down here is Westwood. One thing that um, people talk about a lot right now, and it's also politically charged, is biomass logging. You know, biomass means you're cutting trees for their fiber, not necessarily for the logs. Um, right here in Westwood, when I was a kid, uh, we had this big, uh, big old power plant called Ultra Power. Uh, with a giant wood chip pile and you could sneak out through the woods and you could jump off those piles um, they were like 80 feet tall and you could they're like a giant sand dune basically um, but by having that power plant there that meant that there was it was economical there were subsidies in place to pay for the chips and it was economical to log to thin this whole area around westwood um, out to a radius about 50 miles so that had this regional impact on if you zoom in on the forest here, you see that it, it's thinned. Um, so anyway, a lot of good work got done thinning the forests then. Uh, looking at the Dixie Fire, same as the last um, demonstration here we got on the left is yellow. Those are areas that burned in the Dixie Fire. On the right is an um, area that didn't burn. And you can see all along A21, there's been a lot of thinning done over the last 20 years. And some of the thinning actually got followed up with prescribed burning. And that's kind of the ideal combo, is that you thin the forest and then you come in and use prescribed fire to clean up all the branches and pine needles and stuff. Because we can thin the forest, but if we don't take out a lot of that, if we don't alter the amount of fuel on the forest floor, it really, um, oftentimes, you still have intense fires. So we still had some fires in here along A21 that crowned up and killed all the trees. And there's some YouTube video I'll share of that on the lookout. Um, of that crowning. But when it came down to it, um, they slammed in a bunch of dozer lying along A21. They were able to fire off A21 ahead of the fire's arrival. And that really helped us to control the fire here. And by controlling the fire here, um, it really helped protect my hometown of Westwood um, from, you know, if we had fire still all out to the east here, going into north wind season. Um, anyway, this during a fire like the Dixie, we need every advantage we can get, and uh, landscape scale fuels thinning made a big difference here. Just to go a little bit up north to where we're currently still kind of uh, chasing the last kind of northern parts of the Dixie fire around. Um, on the bottom here, running across uh, kind of the middle of the screen, you see the yellow on top where the fire burned. You see a whole bunch of fuel break thinning on the left hand side where um, we've been able to hold the fire at the um, Westwood logging road. This fire, um, as far as a progress report, you know, it's spotted over some more of our dozer lines uh, yesterday, but it hasn't spread significantly. Uh, we are going into a period of hotter, drier, and potentially a windier conditions. So, you know, there's still quite a bit of heat in this corner of the fire. Uh, and then just the last thing to look at, we've been talking a lot about the reading fire um, and how um, this north edge of the fire is um, proving kind of difficult to, to get a strategy wrapped around. Um, there's actually been a lot of fuels work done inside the reading fire outside of Lassen Park. So you can see in this shot, the purple line is Lassen Park. Everything above that is inside the park. Um, on the National Forest outside the fire, there's been work done to either thin dead brush to get ready to plant trees or um, other fuels work. So um, you can see that some of the burning they've already tried to do here was in areas that were, um, here we go, burning of piled material, and machine piled. Um, anyway, what I'm showing here is data from the Forest Service. And, um, you know, fuels planning is kind of a data intensive enterprise. Uh, but we've done a lot of mapping of this stuff, and there's a lot of information out there. So, um, you know, part of getting better at firefighting is just, you know, making sure that firefighters on the ground have access to this information, you know, so they can 
plan it into their, their tactics. We can see we've done, there's thinning pockets all along this dozer line. And so when we go out to actually fire this, you know, um, or even to build line, having information like this available is uh, pretty critical. So as far as just talking about, hey, how can we be get better at fighting fire? Uh, you know, part of it's just uh, get better at sharing information. Uh, anyway, that's, um, that's thinning in a nutshell. Um, a lot of argument about it, we go straight to our political corners, but when it comes down to it, um, there's places it's really helped out. And it's important when we talk about um, how well it did or didn't hold up during the fire to talk about what was the fire doing when it got there. Obviously, if you're right in the middle of a head fire run, maybe this thing's not gonna buy you much, but it just points to that importance of us being really strategic in how we approach where we do this work, how we spend this money. You know, it's, it's really expensive work and we can't just kind of go willy-nilly and thin here, thin there, and hope for the best. We really have to be thinking like a wildfire and thinking like <clears throat> where we're going to control fires, put the projects there. Anyway, there's going to be a post on this on the lookout, d-lookout.org. Uh, check it out. Thanks for your support.